are you going to find the truth of these three outside of these three or within them will you find the truth of the pot in the pot or outside the pot if you say it's outside the pot then i will hold you know this and say is this the truth of the pot something i have pulled out can it be what is the truth of the pot what is the weight of the pot what is the touch of the pot what is the smell of the pot if i take away clay do you have a pot i will take the clay away do you have a pot you keep the pot i will take the clay if you don't then you have to acknowledge the fact that the pot has no being independent of clay if the pot has no independent being independent of clay then what is this blessed world called a pot what does the word pot mean does it mean anything to you or not it does but does it have an existence of its own independent it doesn't if it doesn't have an independent existence it has a dependent existence you look at any object in the world it has a dependent existence it depends on its cause it depends on its cause it depends on its cause everything depends on its cause everything in time and space must depend on its cause time means cause and effect what do you depend on to say i am do you depend on something if you don't then you understand that this i is something very distinct it is self evident it is self evident all right you know this much but what is the nature of this self evident that is where vedanta steps in and says that self evident you is jagat karanam bro it cannot be study shastra what is the use of knowing this a if you understand that all that is here is me what is it that you need to accomplish what is it that is away from you that you need to gain what is it away from you that you can get rid of what is to be gained what is to be given up if everything is one reality what can you do what do you need to do there is nothing to be done that is called kritakrityata a freedom from any sense of lack a freedom from the need to do anything to accomplish anything is what is gained through an understanding of myself this is what the truth is this is tatvam and the bodha the knowledge of that is called the bodha so you see that you are in for a very interesting journey a journey to discover the truth of the world and of yourself which is very unlike anything else that i have ever known so far and this truth can only be gained through the pramanam through a means of knowledge which is wielded by a person who understands the meaning of knowledge who understands the truth behind the means of knowledge who knows the truth that vedanta is talking about you have to know the whole to explain the parts you have to know the part to explain the whole how do you break this link somebody who knows the whole makes you see it then you understand better so this is what this tattva bodha is all about so you can see i have tried to give you some understanding of how vedanta pursuit of vedanta requires a complete change in the way you look at it while everything is pada and padartha word meaning this is the only thing which is not padartha this is the only thing which cannot be known by you by your traditional means of knowledge of perception and it is the and yet it is the only thing which is going to free you from a sense of lack from a sense of having to become somebody more significant in life because only one significant thing in the universe which happens to be brahman 
which happens to be you and everything else is just an appearance of this alone a standpoint a viewpoint into this alone mother father son spouse employee employer all of these are one view into the total when you take a view for the whole obviously we haven't got it if you understand the whole then alone a view becomes a view every role becomes a role if you know the actor if the actor is not known the role is real the problems of the role are real I shared with you in the beginning, every problem belongs to a role. If there is no role, there is no problem. And even if you understand it's a role, the problem belongs to the role, not to the actor. The whole journey is recognizing I have taken a role to be myself. I am not the role, I am the actor. Okay? This is the truth, and this is what is being taught to Vedanta. So I'm very happy I could spend some time giving you some, some understanding, some insight into how Vedanta is so unique and why it's worth taking a look at. And I'm sure Jay Kumar will, will, will help you make this journey well. He is a very committed student and, you know, hasn't come to it from nowhere has come to it after life of achievements makes a difference vedanta is not for someone who is a cop out who is trying to run away from the world vedanta is for someone who has discovered the limitations of whatever valued earlier no a lot of achievements are there and all of them are needed one has to have a relative sense of self-worth before you can understand what Vedanta has to say. That relative sense of self-worth is necessary. A relative success in life is very useful for a person who is pursuing Vedanta because only then you can see that these relative successes are not what I'm really looking for. You have to have Vairagya, you have to be able to outgrow what you have seen already. And if you think you missed out things in life, then that idea will make me go after that and not after the reality. So he's a person who is well accomplished, a person who has studied for a length of time, and therefore I believe he can also help you make the journey. And it's a growth for both the teacher and student because the teacher also discovers more and more in this aspect. It's not as if we claim we know everything. We share what we know. So I wish you all a wonderful journey of learning together in this journey of self-discovery. Home. I'm open for questions, Jai Kumar, if you want to have it. Sure, Swamiji. Swamiji has agreed to uh, take some questions if you have any. So feel free to raise your hand <clears throat> if you have questions. Swamiji, I, I have a question, Swamiji. Uh, <clears throat> So I think a, a, a question you asked us in the, uh, somewhere along the way is, am I one more word and meaning? That, that was a question that was asked. So that I think was a, it has a lot of implications I feel. It means there is something to be said about what we mean by word and meaning. So the entire Jagat is Nama Rupa. But then a jump is also being made that when I say, when you ask us, am I one more word and meaning? That means something else is being implied, Swami. Yes, see, the point is this. Everything you perceive is a piece of knowledge. Perceive or infer. And for that piece of knowledge, it could be a color. It could be a sound. It could be a smell. It could be an emotion. It could be a taste. How do we communicate? Whatever you know, you know. You saw an elephant, okay? You saw an elephant. Never seen before by you. You saw an elephant. You didn't even know it's called elephant. You saw an elephant. Though. Now you want to share that with your friend. What are you going to do? You'd probably draw. 
you know a tribal person might draw the elephant on on sand and say this kind of animal came here animal they have a word let us say and then he will say this animal let us call it ane no let us call it ane then what happens now you have the word ane means elephant somebody said hathi somebody said elephant what are these three words ane come on what is hathi hindi what is in elephant english you can count 25 more words what are they they are all word symbols for an object you observe a perception now every perception has a perceiver behind it and the truth of the perceiver you will never perceive so you cannot have a word to describe that which cannot be known as a meaning of a word meaning of a word means there is one restricted meaning an elephant is an elephant it's not a cow it's not a buffalo it's not a pot it's not a book it's not a table when you hear the word elephant there is a distinct meaning then of course you can go further and say hey, is it an african elephant or nation elephant because african elephant has bigger ears it's got a bigger body an asian elephant is smaller now you understand samanya is elephant you are looking for vishesha something which qualifies an elephant to make it african nation then you say is it an indian nation elephant or or is it a thai elephant maybe there's some difference but you are still within the realm of the observed every word and meaning is in the realm of the observed it cannot and does not address the one who is behind every observation as i said you can only see one thing the whole world is evident to you through the mind and the mind when i say knowledge is kept in terms of words and meanings at least the knowledge you communicate is in terms of words and meanings and i'm saying whole world is known to you as a word and meaning but are you one of those words and meanings or are you the one who is independent self see when i say self existent self evident i am using words but what did i do you understand the word evident i say is this dhoti or this fact that i am wearing glasses how do you know it is evident to you through your eyes it is evident to you how do you know you are how do you know your eyes see swami ji that my eyes see is evident to me how do you know your eyes are not defective swami ji that is also evident to me when i i don't see i'll go to a optometrist to get checked out how do you know you are there evident to me evident through what how do you know your mind is available to you that you are awake evident to me how evident to you i am the one who is an observer of all the happenings in the mind who is that you how do you know you are there you understand the word evident and now i knock off this evidence through a means of knowing by saying self evident i am using words to knock off the limitation of one word using a second word a second word using a third word finally i will make you see that even though i use words to communicate vedanta what i communicate will be something which is not the meaning of a word. whole pada padartha is avidya aparavidya what is paravidya yaya tadakshiram adigamyate this no other i don't know if if i'm making sense or it seems going over the heads I'm not sure but i'm trying to make you see some yeah that that is uh, that's a good explanation from <coughs> Yeah, him. Uh, un- unmute yourself and uh, ask the question. So, uh, Swamiji, I had a question regarding understanding. So, uh, so we have been uh, seeing that uh, 
the this appreciation of atma should be cognitive so when we say it is cognitive what do we really mean by that what are the different levels of understanding atma that's that's my see when we say cognitive what we really mean is it can only be appreciated by an understanding in general everything that you know is is appreciated by understanding at some level but the fact is suppose i say how is the you know how is the uh, the cup of tea you drink what do you normally say oh that cup of tea you really need to drink it it's a wonderful experience right so people generally know something suppose i say have you ever seen a neil guy you say no i say how will you know neil guy come i'll show you i'll show you a video or i'll show it to you really in the wild then you understand neil guy you have to experience something to know it correct hmm. yeah now the question is 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 there going to be one more experience called atma experience no if no. there is an atma experience then how are you going to know atma question okay. will come yeah not be experience how will you know it i have tell you every experience is atma experience every experience is atma experience. but then you say i don't know atma or you take one aspect of the experience to be atma i have to make you see the two and how will that how will that understanding take place mm -hmm. it can only any understanding any appreciation can only take place in your buddhi therefore when i say it's cognitive i mean it is to be understood it is vichara prapta just like if i come any time to you whether i come at 1 in the night or 3 in the morning and knock at your door and say who are you what will you tell me at 3 in the morning means they have no time to think okay 3 in the morning is for that you just wake up from deep sleep and i ask you who are you what will you say will you say i don't know or will you say you know i am you know so and so what will you say say your name i won't say what anything say? actually i won't say anything because i just woke up from deep sleep no no but i am asking you who are you okay yeah i'll say my name that's the conventional question yeah where does the name belong to the body to the body hmm. now you have given a, a sound symbol for this body hmm. that's what you call yourself hmm. and what do i want you to know i want you to know cognitively the fact that body is perceived by you mm. the body is constantly changing but there is a you who is there from child the time you were born till today you have an you have a cognition of yourself as one being who has been there from childhood till today yes or no mm. you don't think you are you are gone you 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 are different now you are different no you say when i was 5 i had this experience when i was 10 i had this experience at 20 i had this experience you are constant or not i want to know who is that constant you the body is constantly changing every 7 years every single cell of the body is replaced i understand the mind you, you it it doesn't 7 years is too long every seven every moment the mind is changing yeah. mind is but moment i am asking you who are you who knows that moment it to recognize any moment do you or do you not need a reference point how do you say there's a motion a hmm. motion is only recognized if there is a unmoving reference hmm. point hmm. what is the reference point for your mind's moments what is it is there a reference point or not for you to say the mind mood i say just now you know 
suns, hmm. stars. What happened between sun and stars? Did the mind move or not? Yeah. It did. How do you know the mind moved? From whose perspective? What is the reference point from which the mind moved? What is the reference point from which you say, I was five years old, I was 10 years old. What is a fixed reference point which is not subject to time? Does it exist or not? Yeah. Experientially, do you see it existing or not? You do, but yeah. do you recognize it? The problem is not something which doesn't exist. Suppose now I say, hey, can you bring me, I want to have, I'm hungry now, class is over, time to eat. I'm hungry, I want alu paratha. Can you bring it to me immediately? What does it require? It requires buying some alu. Hmm. It requires making the dough, kneading it, cooking it, making it. it. It is something which is not there, which needs to be brought into manifestation. Correct? Hmm. Whereas you, are you there? Anytime. Hmm. Hmm. Are you there or not? Hmm. You are. But you are coming to Atma Vidya class. You don't know who you are. How will you know? How do you know anything? Where do you know anything? Only through cognition, right? Yeah. Everything yeah. you know is known through a cognition. Mm -hmm. How will you know yourself? The cognition. Who mm -hmm. is it? It has to be known cognitively. It's not an experience. Get this very straight. Mm -hmm. It is not like in meditation, in the white heat of meditation, Atma will come out. And Puja Swami would say it comes out like cheese from a Cheese grilled cheese sandwich. It's nice. not like that. It's purely cognitive. It's to be recognized, to be understood. And every cognition takes place in the mind. It does not take place in my feet. The transcendental Atma has nothing to do with dental. It is purely cognitive. Understand the word cognitive? It is something to be appreciated by a thinking person, not as the meaning of a word, yeah, right? but that which is due to which every word and meaning becomes evident. That illumining consciousness, that presence, that awareness, which happens to be the being as well. All this you will see in Tattva Bodha and every text of Vedanta. Mm. I am only trying to sensitize you to saying, how the pursuit of Vedanta is very distinct, very different from anything else you have ever known and why it needs to be distinct. Mm. Make sense? Yeah. Uh, but uh, I actually... Um, so my, my question was also uh, aligned towards... So just to take an example, uh, we see the sun rising in the east every morning and we appreciate it cognitively that it is not the sun which is rising but the earth which is rotating and which is why we see this perception. But then it is not a part of me. I don't usually see it like that. Right. So I can, when I think about it, I know, yeah, this is how it is. But yeah. it is not all the time. I do not think of it all the time like that. Which is what I was trying to ask that are there like levels of understanding? One level of understanding is that when I look at it, I think about it. I know, yeah, this is what the case is. But then there is another level at which I just, the moment I see it, this is what it is. Okay. Fair enough. Like hmm. Fair enough. Let me address that. Hmm. Do you always look at the sunrise? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Do you always look at anything? Yes. Anything? Yes. Um, always. Never that you don't look at. Is there anything like that? Oh, no, not always. I'm in deep, deep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Therefore, every time you look at something, every time you have a perception, there is an operation taking place. Yes. Suppose you looked at a sunrise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you you turned your 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 you 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 started looking at uh, you know you're driving. You looked at sunrise. Then you looked at the road. If you continue to see the sun, what will happen? I'll crash. <laughs> you will crash absolutely. Therefore, the fact that as soon as you turned your attention to the road, what happened? The sun got replaced by the road. 
correct right so the cognition is constantly changing for you hmm. correct hmm. i ask you now when you are seeing the sun when you are seeing the road when you are eating your breakfast when you are waking when you are sleeping when you are talking when you are walking are you there or not hmm. yeah you are there which yeah. is the you i am asking you does it ever go away no the sun you are I, i agree with you that mm. only you have to pay attention to the sun it doesn't look like it is like that when you think about it you see but i am asking you what about the the truth of the thinker does it ever go away from you the truth of the knower does it ever leave you no do you know that truth when i ask you who you are you say i am him that's the name you give a word mm. symbol to give to what yes do you give it to this body do you give it to the mind do you give it to your senses mm. what do you give it to it depends on the context suppose i say who is this person who you know who is this young man and i see in my screen at this level and somebody says that is him that's based on sight of the body of the face now i say i look at a person and say who is the person you know who who is uh who is the youngest person here i don't know if you are the youngest okay i'm just making it up okay. all right but i'm just saying i make a, a a point that based on what i'm saying based on some attribute alone so all your conclusions about yourself will be based on what suppose say, who are you you might say oh i am an engineer based on a profession if i say you know uh you know how how good is your memory oh i have a great memory i, I am a one with great memory everything i told you is based on an aspect of who you, what you observe i want to know the one you observe right so the idea of saying this knowledge is of something which never leaves you you are never without being yourself now this when it's understood this knowledge you don't have to remember it's not something you have to remember it is not something you have to inquire just like at 3 am you would say i am him if this knowledge is clear at any time if you want to say you can say i am from i am not this body i am not this relative existence i am not a viewpoint i am the point mm-hmm. so the cognitive process is what it needs to first recognize this truth if you notice a young child an infant being raised a toddler at 2 years or something when it first starts talking it does not refer to itself as i have you noticed that mm-hmm. it will refer to itself by whatever its name it understands to be because everybody calls it guntu or bantu or something you know so it says bantu will go bantu will do this bantu eat bantu drink why mm-hmm. it's a name for that body but somehow later we train that child to say i mm-hmm. the i notion gets yeah yeah okay so i'm saying this body should be bantu that's correct mm. who are you it's not one more thing that you observe you are the one who is making every one of these evident how are you evident not evident to something else you are evident by yourself you need nothing other than yourself to say i am is what i mean by self evident you will know the presence or absence see the point is to order to express anything you need a mind you cannot express or say or think anything if there is no mind but to be it needs nothing mm. and that being is what we are trying to do and amazingly see someone says if i cannot objectify something it doesn't exist mm. if i ask you in your room is there an elephant no it doesn't therefore <laughs> elephant doesn't exist yeah correct now where is atma show me can you show me you can't show if you can't show it doesn't exist a can you deny yourself if you can deny yourself i'll accept your arguments with what do you know yourself you have nothing to say except i know i am that's it 
and that is what that's not another experience mm. use the word cognitive to show it is not another experience an experience in puji swami's words is dumb an experience doesn't make you any wiser and most of the spiritual world is after an experience somebody has told them experience atma is a bliss it's a blissful experience if you are looking for an experience every experience begins and ends every experience is momentary one moment moment you have bliss next moment what will happen if bliss is continuous all the time it is bliss then you cannot have any other experience right then you cannot call it bliss because the word bliss means there are other experiences which are not blissful mm. so every word has a meaning because its meaning can be knocked out by another word by another experience so atma as a blissful atma is not an and if indeed bliss was the nature of atma then how will you distinguish the bliss of atma with bliss of ice cream hmm. so the connotation the thinking the normal un avichara siddha thinking is that there is some new experience related to atma brahman experience i have to have i need to know what is brahman i i i want to experience brahman hey every experience in, including the one where you say i want to experience brahman is brahman experience okay hmm. No, no, I don't know. Then let him know. If you don't know that is Brahman experience, come to me and help me and help help. We basically try to understand what do I mean by Brahman. That without which there is no experience is called Brahman. Mm. That consciousness in which every experience comes to light yeah. and every experience gets a being, a body, is called Brahman. Brahman is jagat karanam. Just like there is no pot without its cause clay, there is no experience, there is no perception, no perceiver, no knowledge, no known, no sound, no hearer, no thought, no thinker, unless there is this one reality. That one reality has to be there in every single experience. and our normal way of life is an experience hunt you look at your life what is it that you your goal in life is is it an experience hunt or not yeah everything you are trying to have happy experiences you are trying to knock out unhappy experiences and you want to extend an experience like rubber to extend yeah. your whole lifetime mm. yeah. have you succeeded at 25 you haven't succeeded at 45 it won't be better at 85 it won't be any any different when i recognize i am trying to do the impossible i have to have some sense in my head this is not the way this cannot be the goal of life cannot be another experience or a bunch of experiences hmm. that's why we use the word cognitive because you have to only understand every experience is you you don't only understand understanding another word for understanding is cognition mm-hmm. think about it may still not be very clear um think about but, it yeah so him let's uh, yeah. let's uh, have the discussion later also and i think ashutosh there swami if you have a couple more minutes we have one more question from you no problem absolutely ashutosh go ahead my my question was actually Uh, a little bit more general and i mean um, it was about uh, uh, sanatan dharma in general because what we are seeing is that um, whether it's the sabri mala issue or it's christian conversions that are happening uh, unabated uh, what are some of the things that uh, that you that that your ashram is doing in the short term and the long term to stem that tide and what can we do to to sort of um you know stop the conversions and and um, sort of have a renaissance um for uh, so so that you know we 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 sort of we are we are able to have a little bit more pride in what we already uh, in, in our own culture in 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 hinduism in sanatan dharma okay see if you say what is the ashram doing 
This is a Gurukula, which the purpose is to teach Vedanta. We are not so much into, into, you know, going about an activist way of dealing with it. But what we do is we educate people about realities. And we, we have enough education here to show you what is the reality. A person in Supreme Court doesn't understand what is Ishvara. And he gives a judgment based on something which he doesn't understand. So this, without understanding, people talk about the Hindu religion. So people say, you have many gods. You are all idol worshippers. We never really have many gods. They say we have one god. They say they have, we have only one god. And if anybody believes another god is a blasphemer. Right? So I ask you. If there is only one God, how can there be another God? If that is the reality. How can there be? And that one God, and he is formless, and he is in heaven. How can the formless have a place, a location? And why it's a he? Why not a she? If I say it's a she, the fellow will get fits. God cannot be a she. Immediately the ratio of fatwa. It's over. So these are all surviving because of non-thinking. Mm. All of this avichara siddha, nobody questions, nobody calls their bluff enough. Mm. And they have a very nice trick to prevent questioning because they talk of two realities. A Satan mm. and a God. And all these questions are asked by Satan. Now the question is, who is more yeah. powerful, God or Satan? <laughs> so our contribution to this whole thing, as a curriculum, I'm saying, is more through education. Right. And not by standing on the street or, or talking. What each of you can do is you share your understanding with others that you know. You do whatever else you can that what you can do is left to you. But what I think will make, the reason Veda, this, this culture, this Sanatana Dharma is still surviving, the word Sanatana means it's forever. It is surviving only because there is a spirit which, which is behind the forms in this culture. Every form in this culture is backed by a spirit and we are a live teaching tradition who can explain and unfold the spirit. Whereas in every other situation, there is a form which has no backing from a spirit. So keeping the spirit alive is what the Gurukulam does. And showing the connection between the spirit and the form is what the Gurukulam does. Why should you wear a bindi? Why should you have a prayer? How can you pray to many gods? Hey, we don't have many gods. We don't have one god. What do you have? We have only God. There is only God. No, no, I am not God. Hey, you are God. I am not God. That's your problem. Come and understand what we are trying to tell you. <laughs> so, this, this vision is too profound for a person who is already brainwashed. Because the brainwashing has to be undone. So, you're right in saying we have to instill pride. First, we have to have pride. We have to see reason ourselves. Swamiji used to say, there is one thing alone you can do in this world. You can make sure there is one idiot less in the world. And that is yourself. <laughs> Trying to change the world is, is fine. But, you know, whether we can change the world is a very different uh, ball game. So we all make our contributions in the way we do. Mm. But what drives all this is a perception, understanding. So I think we, if somebody comes, we have had Dharma Rakshana Samhita meetings here. We encourage that. You know, people will come and talk about Dharma. They have a secure place where they can come and discuss that. We address them if they ask for it. But Vedanta is 
is much beyond dharma and this gurukulam is more focus of vedanta puja swami ji was a great teacher of vedanta and also had the space and the the, the leadership skills the the weight with which he could influence the world leaders he participated in religious meetings in religious you know dialogue and he used to say there is generally no dialogue <laughs> they don't come to have dialogue the dialogue they come for is to say we will remain what you are and since you are sanatan dharmi they are always accepting everything why don't you accept this their attempt is always look your money is your money right your money is my money my money is your money therefore let your money be with me <laughs> they will not say let my money be with you this yeah. is their business they are committed to what converting the whole world into monotheistic world that's their commitment and they think they will go to heaven for that somebody is given a nobel prize for seemingly treating patients what is not seen is that treatment was done in order to put a cross on them yeah this is a lot of bluff going on in the world and there are vested interests which will promote and propagate that mm. the indian viewpoint is seen through a harvard professor who has who has no clue or has an, in fact the agenda to do opposite it's not today i don't know if you if you know there's a dictionary in sanskrit called monier william dictionary mm, yeah it's monier william dictionary if you go and look at its preface which is in the print you will find he says the purpose is because these indian fellows only study sanskrit so we have to write a bible in sanskrit that's when they will you can convert these fellows the purpose of writing a dictionary should destroy us what we do is we try to call all this bluff we try to do we try to debunk a lot of these things but we don't have a huge audience here but what swami ji has done which we, we will attempt to continue is we don't teach just people we teach teachers who will teach more people mm. we want to keep the teaching tradition alive so this place has had five long term courses this gurukulam where people have been you know jay kumar is a product of one of such courses 40 40 people around graduated with him so 40 people of which even 15 talk they reach out to another you know so many people our multiplier effect has to each of you is potentially a person who can take the message a little further that's how we go about doing it and some of the matters are contentious okay by nature yeah. they are contentious and we should understand that a lot of things in sanatan dharma the spirit was there but the implementation is not necessarily the way it should have been yeah you know and is it worth fighting over every single thing or is it worth focusing on something i don't I mean this is this is very you know it it will be a can of worms to open it up here but i'm just saying that just by saying see there's a lot of talk about cow 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 vigilantes see the media is only highlighting whatever people the so called rational person the so called you know uh, secular person will accept they highlight this and they do bashing of of anything religious is it worthwhile we are not interested only in cows for us ahimsa paramo dharma i am equally committed to protecting a goat there is no bakrid for us eat a festival for me becomes a a time of mourning for all the poor animals every poor turkey in the us has to has to has to you know pray that thanksgiving doesn't come <laughs> what thanks giving is that but this is not seen so you will see the president of the united states presents a turkey to somebody what do you do are you going to change it tomorrow the london mayor you know when when few years ago there was this uh, dr pachauri is it pachauri i don't remember his name he won the uh, you know for the climate he won an award management indian person indian origin and this person made us him for me at that time brought him to a gurukul anniversary and said that you know red meat is a source of greenhouse gases it's even recorded this is an observation scientific study what did the london mayor say at that time i am going to eat red meat every day 
So we have to see how silly people can be and how are you going to change habits of people. So what do they projected? Oh, Hindus are anti bees You know? Oh, they, they, for them it's a holy cow. As I told you, it's not a holy cow, it's holy life. So we have to also see what symbols we take up, what you fight for, how you do. It's, it's a tough battle. Everyone has to do what they can towards correcting misperceptions. And another big factor is this. See, Christians fund conversions. Yeah. Every Christian pays a tax to the church, which is used to bring back part of it comes back to conversion. You don't have a grave, I believe, in Europe unless you are part of paying a church. You don't have a place where you can be buried. And that's a substantial amount of money. And even the people who are doing it don't know how the money is being spent. It's all, it's all tough. I don't have answers. But we pray and we try to educate to the extent we can. It's all we can do. Thank you, Solomon. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, so thanks. What we want to do now is, I thought we'll go around the room and uh, everybody uh, introduce themselves, tell me your name, tell which city you're from, and uh, if you're working, which industry you're working in, if you're retired, which industry you're retired from, etc. Just a couple of lines. Uh, Rukmini ji, go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, okay. okay. Pranam Samiji, I am Rukmini Gopal. I come from De uh, I used to attend uh, Rishikesh Ashram. I am blessed uh, having uh, attended so many camps with Puji Swamiji. Last, uh, I visited Anikati also with Srinivasanji when we had that conversation. Which Srinivasan? Brahmachari Srinivasan. Ah, okay. Srinivasan who is... Uh, in charge of this Vodhuvas project. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was just checking because we there are a couple of Srinivasans. Yeah, we were there and we met you. Namaste, ma. Oh, I don't recall, unfortunately. We will come. Pranam Swamiji. My name is Swapna. I am from Houston. Right now, I am in Coimbatore with my parents here in Vadavalli. Oh. Uh, been a part of Ashavidya Gurukulam for many years now. So it was a pleasure to listen to you. This is my first time. Oh. Are you? Oh. Thanks, Vapna. Sunita, Chavendra, and then Bhagya. Namaskaram, Swamiji. I am Sunita. I am from Columbus, Ohio. Um, I've been going to Vedanta classes of he is a student of Ashavidya of Swami Paramarthananda. We're very fortunate to have you today and listen to you. Thank you. I'm Bhagya. I'm also from Colombia. I can't hear what you're saying. Something happened. Are you unmuted or not? Yeah, Bhagya, go ahead. Once again. Namaskaram Swamiji, I'm Bhagya. I'm also from Kalamazoma. Somehow it goes after she is I'm Bhagya, it doesn't matter. Okay. Can't hear anything after that. Yeah, she's from Columbus also, Swamiji. Okay. She's also a Sanskrit class. Okay. So I'm going to mute everybody because there is some noise. Somebody's breath is getting amplified. And uh, so Deepa, go ahead and unmute yourself. Namaste, Swamiji. Thank you for your time. I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I work for the state government. That is my body, Swamiji. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Mohini and then Ashutosh. Namaskara, Swamiji. Uh, my name is Mohini. I'm from Columbus, Ohio. And... Uh, I try to learn as much as I can from Jay Kumarji and then we have our Vedanta Guru here in Columbus, Ohio and we have another teacher who teaches us about Vedic, Vedic chanting and thanks to uh, all my gurus for providing me with this knowledge otherwise I would not be what I am today. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Namaste Swamiji. Ashutta, I am from Austin, Texas 
and uh, I've been attending uh, Vedanta classes with Jay Kumarji for the for I think last four five months now, and I'm also in the Vedic chanting class. So thank you so much for your time today, and thank you to Jay Kumarji also. Uh, so thank you. Very welcome. Prasad Gurujala, then Bhuvanesh, then Sunita Abhi. Namaste Swamiji, my name is Prasad Gurujala. Uh, I'm from Houston, Texas. Uh, and uh, Dr. Jay Kumarji has been here for a long time and uh, we all uh, went to the home study uh, Bhagavad Gita classes. Uh, and of course I am again with uh, uh, Tato Bodha classes with him. Um, I've been following various Gurujis who comes here, Swamiji's, uh, attend their uh, uh, pravachanas and classes. Uh, so I've been following Asha Vidya Gurukala for some time. Good. Bhuvanesh. Uh, Namaste Swamiji. Uh, my name is Bhuvanesh and uh, I'm from Bangalore. Uh, I'm into software. Um, it's a great pleasure uh, hearing to you in today's class. I've been attending the Sanskrit class uh, from Jai Kumar from past uh, almost uh, one year right now from this uh, February. It's a great pleasure. Namaste. Where do you work? Uh, I run a small uh, software firm. It's a startup firm. It's a very small firm. So I, I run with my friend actually. Good. Thank you. Namaste Swamiji. This is uh, Sunita from uh, Mysuru. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I'm a, uh, I, I came to know about uh, Arshavitya Gurukulam and uh, uh, through Jay Kumar through Aim for Saver, we were with Aim for Saver uh, in Houston, and then uh, moved back to India a few years ago, and uh, um, learning a lot from uh, Jay Kumar and Srinivasanji. That's it, thank you so much for your time today. Aim, then Mahesh, and then Surendra Watwe. Uh, namaste Swamiji, uh, I am Aim, and uh, I, uh, so I, I am an engineer. I'm working in a startup right now, and uh, it's a medical devices startup. So medical devices. We make the devices for neurosurgery. Yeah. Is is your full name him or is it a short form? Uh, no, no, no. It's just him. Him. Uh, my surname is Rampal. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I thought maybe it's a attenuated name. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> like an attenuated signal. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Not like that. Just him. Fair enough. You know what it means? Yeah, it means golden, right? It's a Sanskrit word. Him. Gold, gold shines like consciousness. Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good to know. Mr. Swamiji, my name is Ish. I am from Houston. Uh, I've been attending Tatwa Boda class since the last few months. Um, thank, uh, it was a pleasure to listening to you today. It was fortunate to uh, listen to you. I'm listening to you for the first time. Thanks to Jay Kumar for arranging this. Pranam Swamiji. I'm Surendra Watwe. Uh, I'm from Pune. Uh, I'm delighted to hear from you. It was very. Uh, I'm thankful to this Guru Parampara to understand something. And thanks to uh, Jai Kumarji. Uh, before my mistake, the last three four months. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hara Prasad. Yes. Namaste Swamiji, I am Hara Prasad from Houston, I am a retired person, my field was nuclear engineering, uh, Jay Kumar was our teacher for Bhagavad Gita classes when he was here and we are continuing it from the last seven years is going on and we thank you for all the time you spent with us and very much appreciated. My Thank pleasure. You, My pleasure. Karthik Velmore. Pranam Swamiji. I'm Karthik from Hyderabad. I work in the semiconductor industry. 
uh, it's it's a pleasure for all of us uh, to have you here so we thank we thanks a lot we thank you a lot special thanks to jay kumar ji for uh, enlightening us since for quite some time now and enabling us to explore a lot further <clears throat> virtual space is very interesting it enables people so in so many different places to connect at one time and and be as though we are together so it's it's a very interesting uh, thing because when i started online class in sanskrit technology was not so far you know it, it hadn't come this far so to see all these faces was next to impossible you would only have a voice and they don't see you you don't see them and it's even that at that time seemed very amazing you know yeah, yeah. this is uh, a lot more lot more interesting to see now that you can at least see the person's expression you can see whether it's the understanding or they're bored and that's important in teaching that yeah. you're able to see your student and see whether they are with you or they're not i mean i love to have interactive in the sense like i love to hear people's responses because that's when i know whether what i'm saying is hitting home or it's going off and without that that body language without looking at a person you don't know whether you're connecting or you're disconnected so it's very nice jay kumar it's good technology thank you for uh, bringing me back to technology after a long time yeah i mean yeah when i was very impre- very impressed when i heard you through that classes 10 years ago and i was on uh, this telephone connection even in the us i didn't have a fiber and all that it was through the telephone line so uh, i was very impressed every class i used to be impressed you know would i hear you etc and uh, it worked very well and uh, so here swami ji my concern was uh, in the sanskrit class especially class where interactivity is key and needing to look at everybody etc so i didn't know how that would work but fortunately you know with being able to see everybody and uh, we have developed some tricks which we used to manage we have we talk in a particular order in alphabetical order and things like that so it's some tricks like that we have and uh, so it worked it has been working quite well so very good now that's right you know because after those after 2009 i never came back to a class online this is the first class after i'm doing after those sanskrit classes now online oh i see so i i thought from anikatti you cannot do anything because this place has no internet connection good connection so it's a it's an eye opener that it can be done yes sir and then so it's good definitely and then the sanskrit class all students are ready to take the, uh, the sanskrit bharati's pravesha exam that is the first of the four exams pravesha parite yes. shiksha and uh, kovida so we are trying to work through the logistics of that good good very well glad you're doing this and i hope it because it gives an opportunity i can see most of your audience at least today seems to be you know us based so is it is it like close to bedtime for you now yeah it is probably 9 o'clock in eastern and 10 o'clock in east coast columbus yeah so 10 o'clock means i i don't know how alert you can be for vedanta class is difficult with time zones see for us it's early morning we're fresh but for you it's the end of a long day so this will be the difficulty with you know managing them because if we want to teach you in your morning it'll be late evening for us the whole midday of is gone with with this cross continental business but at least what is good is you have a time zone where we can participate with you because if it's somewhere in between like europe it's very difficult to find a time slot where everybody is available at least you as a 12 hour 10 hour and a half hours is, is good and go back and forth yeah good very nice so i would like i i pray that every one of you should have more opportunities to learn and may what you learn bless you that's my wish for you oh. thank, thank you thank you so much swami ji okay om pur namada pur namidam pur na pur namo dakshate pur nasya pur namadaya pur nameva vashishyate shanti 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 hari ho guru ko namah hari ho thank you very much swami yeah. thank you so much thank you thank you swami thank you swami
थैंक यू नमस्कार धन्यवाद नमस्कार